Good morning. Rise up in hope today. It's a brand new day for some of us. It's a brand new week. And today's devotional is called Stay Close, Don't Drift. Stay close and don't drift. Stay close to the one who holds everything in his hands. Stay close to the one who has numbered the hairs on your head. Stay close to the one that is never sleeping, never slumbering. Stay close. Stay close. Let's discipline ourselves to stay close to our creator. I want to go to the book of Job. I love the book of Job. I did not love the book of Job in the beginning of my walk with Jesus. I tried to avoid that book because there's a lot of stuff that happens to Job. And he's a good, godly man. So I just was like, mm, don't want to go there. But as I began to not be so scared, I decided to take it apart. And I am telling you the last few chapters of Job, I meditate on often when I want to remember the superiority of who God is. So I want us to go to Job 38. The study app has such good good explanations that I'm going to read a few of these this morning. I'm going to start here. It says, out of a mighty storm, God spoke. He didn't answer any of Job's questions. Job's questions were not at the heart of the issue. Instead, God used Job's ignorance of the earth's natural order to reveal his ignorance of God's moral order. If Job did not understand the workings of God's physical creation, how could he possibly understand God's mind and his character? There is no standard of or criteria higher than God himself by which to judge. God himself is the standard. Our only option is to submit to his authority and rest in his care. Job 38 verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of a storm. And I just think it's in very uh, timely that we're talking about a storm because I think many of us have storms in our lives. There are a lot of storms. There are, I see raging storms in many places in my own personal life, on a corporate level, on a national level, on the world level. The Lord answered Job out of a storm. He said, who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man and I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstones while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it thick darkness, wrapped in it thick darkness. When I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place. When I said, this far you may come and no further. Here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. The wicked are denied their light and their upraised arm is broken. Verse 16, have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. What is the way to the abode of light? And where does darkness reside? Can you take them to their places? Do you know the paths to their dwelling? Surely you know, for you were already born. You have lived so many years, exclamation point. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of hail, which I, the Lord says, reserves for times of trouble, for the days of war and battle? What is the way to the place where the lightning is dispersed or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth? Who cuts the channel for the torrents of rain and 
a path for the thunderstorm, to water the land where no man lives, a desert with no one in it, to satisfy a desolate wasteland and make it sprout with grass. Does the rain have a father? Who fathers the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from heavens when the waters become hard as stone, when the surface of the deep is frozen? And it goes on and on, friends, on and on. I encourage you to read 38, 39. And then I want to take a look at 40. 40, chapter 1, it says, The Lord said to Job, Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him accuse God. Let him who accuses God answer him. And Job answered the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. And he goes on again in his loving kindness to explain to Job, I am so much bigger than you think I am. I am so much more superior than any being on the planet. And I love that answer. And I love the, the gentle descriptions. And then and even in 41, he continues on. And at the very end of verse uh, chapter 41, verse 33, nothing on earth is equal, a creature without fear. And it says, the Lord looks down on all that are haughty. He is king over all that are proud. And so here we see in chapter 42, the end, the last chapter, it says Job is restored. And in verse 1, then Job rep replied to the Lord, after Job had listened to all who God was and all of his character was revealed, Job says, I know that you can do all things, that no plan of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my counsel without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and I repent in dust and ashes. Until we fully understand, until God fully reveals himself to us in a very intimate way. It is hard for us to see him for who he is. But here, Job has understanding. And the end of verse 42 is absolutely beautiful in the sense that God restores everything because Job received revelation and moved from it. God is superior and we need to stay close to him. We need not drift away and we need not let discouragement come out in or doubt come in that God isn't on the throne of our lives and he doesn't see all things because he truly, truly does. He sees everything. I just wanna see if there's any other study app that I need to share with you. If you have your study application, I really encourage you to read uh, as you read a chapter, go down and see the study application so that it could be a lesson for you currently. It helps us to see things as they are in our lives today. So now I want us to go to Acts. We're going to go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, and we are going to begin reading in verse 24. Again, our devotional, stay close to God. Don't drift. More than ever we need him. More than ever we need to remember who lives inside of us. Acts chapter 17, beginning in verse 24, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else from one of men 
that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. I'm going to read that again, verse 28, one of my life scriptures. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. We are offspring of God Almighty, and it is in him we live and move and have our being. The inheritance of believers and followers of Jesus is unfathomable. That means we cannot comprehend it. Everything that God has, we inherit. If you think about a will in the natural, and when a loved one dies, everything gets gets put in a document and passed down to whoever's left in the family, Think about that for a minute. Think about God being our inheritance and everything, everything that he has. We have the inheritance and the great news is we don't have to wait until he calls us home. He gives it to us here on this earth while we are advancing his kingdom with him. Oh, that's good news. And the study application here says God is known in his creation and he is close to every one of us, but he is not trapped in his creation. He is transcendent. God is the creator, not the creation. This means that God is sovereign and in control, while at the same time he is close and personal. Let the creator of the universe rule your life. Let the creator of the universe rule your life. You know, I was thinking about here, I, I was ready. I, a little bit before the go button. <laughs> Tried to wait till seven. Oh, sometimes it's really hard. But I was sitting here and I was, I was taken back to some times where I was in a car and we were lost. And the driver did not know where to drive. But there was somebody in the car that was familiar with where we were. And that somebody became somebody that we were listening to intently and we all shifted our gear, our eyes to the one who knew how to get out, how to, how to navigate through lost territory, things we didn't understand. And, and I'm thinking about a teacher. You know, if you're a teacher, you go into the class and, and you're teaching math and there's a student there that has no idea how to solve those math problems. But you can be sure that if they want to learn, the one person that they're going to look to in that moment is the teacher that knows, is the teacher that can direct them, is the teacher that can show them in love. It's just, it just goes like this, not devaluing the lack of knowledge, but saying, I have your answers. Let me show you. Oh, these are, these are little ways that we can see how important it is to stay close to the one that has the answers. Now let's go on the magnitude level of God Almighty who knows everything. He knows where my day is today. He knows the end from the beginning. So I align myself with him early in the morning and I thank him first of all. And I say, God, I thank you that you have me today. Everything that I do. I am trusting you for everything, everywhere I go. And I just start having this prayer of gratitude that the one who knows everything I'm close to. So I encourage us today to stay close and don't drift. And throughout your day, just find that place when you begin to drift away because you're hearing other people and, oh, the world right now is swarming with negativity. Just don't participate. You have a choice. You can remove yourself from that and choose to believe. You can use your mouth to say, hey, you know what? God's in control. God's got this. And because he has this, everything will be all right. You can be the mouthpiece or you can remove yourself, but don't stay in the poison. Poison brings very discouraging days and we don't need to go there. And God does not want us to be there. He wants us to trust him to trust him. He wants us to remember he knows everything 
and read Job, read the last three chapters of Job, and there's such colors, there's such pictures there. If you're an artist, start painting Job because it is beautiful. It is beautiful, beautiful scripture that can give you colorful interpretations of how magnificent our God is. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you that you are on the throne of our lives. Thank you that nothing that I face, you haven't already seen it today. And I thank you that you're not trapped in a box. You are God Almighty. You have Jesus, your son, sitting at the right hand with you right now, praying for the people that love him. And also you have the powerful Holy Spirit work working on earth, pouring out his spirit. So we just thank you. We thank you for oh, the opportunity. We thank you for the honor of knowing who you are. And we, we have chosen you. We believe in you. And we will see you at work in this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a beautiful day. You rise today in hope. You rise today in power. And write it down. Write it down. See you tomorrow.